Hi, welcome to the third video for Edsel Physics Unit 4, uh, June 2018. So let's start. Question number 16. The diagram and photograph show a moving coil loudspeaker. The loudspeaker contains a coil connected to a cone that is free to move. The coil is in a radial magnetic field. Uh, when there is a varying current in the coil, the magnetic force on it, on it varies. And this varying force causes the coil and the cone to vibrate, producing sound waves. The diagram below show, shows the magnetic and the coil in the magnetic field. Explain why even though the wire is not straight, the force F on a single turn of the coil can be calculated using F equal to BIL where L is the length of the single turn. So first of all you need to understand meaning of radial field. So meaning of radial field is if you see the diagram uh, this arrow inward arrows are showing a magnetic field from north to south and uh, Radial mean the, the field is always at 90 degree to the coil at every point because coil is in a circle and field is radial so all the field lines are passing through the center so if you see the angle between the coil at that point and the, and, and, and the magnetic field it is 90 degree and second thing is if you recall that if theta is 90 then uh, force on a on on a straight conductor is f is equal to b i l this is force on a current carrying conductor is straight conductor of length l so that's what they are asking why uh, can we use this formula same formula for a circular loop the reason is if you need to find force on the whole ring or whole circular conductor uh, you need to consider first force on a small element like you can consider a small a very small length like like this and it's smaller than even this so this is the length delta l a small element which is considered as a straight conductor now because this conductor is a straight so we can use formula f is equal to b i delta l and this is uh, force on a uh, uh, force on 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 this small element uh, it's better to call let's say uh, f1 and now you will take another small element here delta l2 so you can say that you have another force f2 is equal to b i delta l let's say 2 and you can keep finding the force on each such elements all around the loop so you have f1 f2 f3 and f4 until fn and if you need to find the total force, so you will have to add all these forces. So F1 plus F2 plus F3 and so on. Then, then you can find the total force F. And if you do that, if you find the total force, then you will have to add all the elements. Delta L1, Delta L2. And if you add Delta L1, Delta L2 all length of small elements so you have length of the total loop that's why we can use same formula for the circular loop or the circular coil Calculate the force acting on a coil of 120 turns. I is 0.11 ampere. B is 0.8 tesla. Diameter of the coil is 4.5 centimeter. So if you need to find the force. So we are going to use same formula. F equal to BIL. 
but L, L is the length of the conductor and conductor is in the form of uh, uh, a, a loop. So you can say that the formula would be B I L, L is the length of the loop, which is the circumference and circumference is pi into D. So this is uh, the full formula for the force on just one loop with the diameter 4.5. And if we have 120 turns, so the total force of 120 turn is B I pi D into 120. So this is the force acting on 120 turns of the diameter 4.5 centimeter. So you will have to convert this centimeter into meter. You substitute all the values. B is 0.8 Tesla. I is the current 0.11 ampere. Pi is constant. D is the diameter. So 4.5. Uh, be, be careful. It should be in centimeter times 120. If you do that, your force will be equal to 1.5 Newton. Part B, an amplifier unit can be used to amplify music from uh, device from devices with the small speakers such as the smartphones. In the amplifier unit, there is a coil connected to an amplifier and a loudspeaker as shown. So this is the coil in the amplifier, amplifier unit and the loudspeaker. So a smartphone is placed on the amplifier unit so that the coil in the smartphone is speaker is above the coil in the amplify unit. This is the smartphone and the coil in the smartphone is just above the coil of the amplifier. Explain how the music played by smartphone is also played through the loudspeaker in the amplifier unit. Uh, it's all about mutual induction because if you have two coils, like you can imagine you have coil number one which is connected through some alternating power supply like that and this coil because the alternating power supply so current is flowing through that coil that cause a magnetic field of the coil so this coil has its own magnetic field but this magnetic field b will be changing because the current is changing through the coil so this is varying magnetic field and this coil is called a primary coil and if you put another coil close to that something like this is another coil like that and this is called secondary coil and it is not connected to any 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 of the power supply it's just a simple coil so the magnetic field of the primary coil linked with the secondary coil so secondary coil has its own flux but as the primary current is changing or where or, 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 or primary is producing varying magnetic field and this magnetic field linked with the secondary coil, that's why the flux of secondary coil changes that produce EMF in the secondary coil. And this EMF in the secondary coil causes to produce uh, varying, uh, varying EMF that causes this loudspeaker to vibrate. Now, see what is happening here. In this diagram, the coil of a smartphone is above the the, the coil of the amplifier. So flux of this uh, is smartphone coil linked with this, uh, this, this uh, amplifier coil. So if it is producing varying uh, a magnetic field that links with the coil, so its flux is changing, amplifier coil flux is changing, producing induced EMF in it that causing uh, a complete circuit of the loudspeaker and the loudspeaker produce the same sound with some amplified amount so music is being played due to varying current in the coil of the smartphone that causes magnetic field in the coil so the magnetic field also links with the coil of the amplifier unit here you can see so the change in magnetic flux in the coil of, of uh, amplifier unit causes an emf and the coil is connected to the loudspeaker so varying current and the coil causes a loudspeaker to vibrate. 
Question number 17, this a student uh, attempts to measure the speed of air leaving a hair dryer by measuring the force exerted by the air on an electronic balance. So this is air is coming out, hitting the uh, pan of base of, 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 of the balance and then reflecting something like this. This is the simplified diagram. The diagram shows the path of an object of mass m colliding with the surface at a speed v at an angle theta the collision takes a time t explain why the force f exerted on the surface of uh, surface by a single collision is given by f equal to mv sin theta over t now if you see that uh, the momentum of air is uh, this this is p but when the uh, air hit the the uh, pan of 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 the balance uh, it apply force in that direction but if you need to find the, uh, uh, the the change in momentum so this p has its component one component is the vertical one like that and then this clearly this component the horizontal component cannot produce a force so this component of momentum will produce a force on it. So this is, I'm going to say, this is a vertical momentum, PV. And from that diagram, this is opposite to theta. So you can say that uh, a PV is basically P sine theta. So the vertical momentum that is uh, creating force on the pan is P sine theta. So you can say that uh, for that PV sine theta, PV sin, uh, sorry, uh, it's not PV, it's P sin theta and P is momentum. So you can say that vertical momentum PV is MV sin theta. So this is momentum before collision, vertical momentum before collision. And then after collision, you have uh, another momentum like that. And this momentum is also uh, MV sin theta. And if, because momentum is a vector quantity, if you need to find the change in momentum, then the change in momentum, delta PV, the change in momentum would be 2MV sine theta. Remember, when we find change in momentum, we always find final momentum minus initial momentum. And momentum is vector quantity. So if you, if you, if you take a, uh, uh, the initial momentum negative because it is going down it's up to you you can take it positive as well so if you take this momentum as negative then the final momentum will be positive the direction is upward so uh, if you subtract these two so final minus initial so you can say that mv sine theta minus initial momentum which is minus mv sin theta that's how you can find 2 mv sin theta the change in uh, vertical momentum now you have a change in momentum you can figure out according to newton's second law the force f is uh, delta pv divided by t and you can see clearly that f is equal to 2 mv sin theta divided by t that's how you can prove it. <coughs> the student varies the angle theta at which he holds the hair dryer a graph of force fb acting on electronic balance against sin theta is plotted this is force on vertical axis, horizontal axis is value of, of sine theta. The average mass of air is striking the electronic balance per unit time. Mass per unit time is given by Va rho, where A is the area of the hair dryer nozzle and rho is the density of air. The student assumes that the air behaves as in part A. Show that in this case, the gradient of the graph is 2v square a rho. Okay, so now if you find the gradient, 
So gradient is rise over run. So gradient is rise over run. In this case, the rise is your amount of force. So F B divided by run. Run is the value of uh, sine theta. So F B upon sine theta. And now you can see that FB is the force acting on on the balance which is uh, we have proved F is equal to 2mv sin theta divided by T so this is force or FB so you can substitute the value for force and you can say that FB is uh, 2 mv sin theta divided by t over sin theta clearly sin theta and sin theta gets cancelled so gradient is equal to 2 m v by t and now in this equation if you look at m upon t this is mass per unit time and in the question they are saying the mass of air striking electronic balance per unit time is this so you know that m upon t is equal to rho v a rho so you, you replace m by t in the equation so you say that the gradient is equal to twice of m by t and m by t is v a rho so v a rho into v this v is the last one so v and v v square so gradient is equal to 2 v square a rho that's what you need to prove Calculate the speed of air. Area of hair dry nozzle is this and density of the air is this. So you need to look at the graph in the previous page. And this is the graph. And you know that you have proved that the gradient involves velocity. So first you need to find the gradient of the graph. For that purpose, we are going to uh, choose a best uh, line of best fit. So this is the line of best fit and these are the two points on the line of best fit you can choose uh, for for uh, for the purpose of a triangle and then the coordinate of these two points are these if you see point 0.9 and point 0.3 for that point and point 0.3 and point 0.1 you can choose any other two points but make sure that they are uh, making a big triangle so the gradient from these two points you can figure out is uh, rise over run or y2 minus y1 so 0.3 minus 0.9 sorry it's not 0.9 it is 0.1 so 0.3 minus 0.1 y2 minus y1 and this is 0.1 divided by x2 minus x1 so 0 0.9 minus 0 0.3 so gradient from that equation would be uh, equal to 0 0.33 so this is your gradient 0 0.33 uh, Newton this is your gradient and uh, then you know that the gradient is equal to 2 V square a rho that we proved in the previous part so v would be equal to gradient divided by 2 a rho square root you substitute the value gradient is 0 0.33 2 a is the area of the nozzle which is 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 and rho is the density you substitute all the value so v you are going to find 8.3 29 meter per second or you round it off so v is equal to 8.3 meter second inverse that's how you can figure out a speed of air suggest why the speed calculated in part b 
might be incorrect so of course you say that the velocity depends on many factor uh, many factors are there involved so we maybe you 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 see that the uh, density of the air might be different that we are using here in this example at that moment because of the temperature change density might be different and uh, of course we assume that the theta is for air particle is same for some value but for for different particles theta will be different uh, due to these reasons uh, we might be different that we calculate it Question number 18. A student investigating capacitor uses the circuit shown. Uh, okay. The capacitor is initially uncharged. When the switch is closed, there is a current in the circuit and the capacitor charges. The resistance of the variable resistor is adjusted as the capacitor charges in order to maintain constant current in the circuit. After a time of 132 seconds, the capacitor is fully charged. Show that the capacitance of the capacitor is about 5000 microfarad. Initial resistance is 28 kilo ohm and applied potential difference is 6 volt. We need to find capacitance and the straightforward approach for capacitance is uh, we have a formula for capacitance which is C is equal to Q by V. Uh, for capacitance, we need charge and we need voltage, but charges and the voltage, we are given voltage, but we are not given charge. But if you see that, this Q is the amount of charge can be written as I into T as per definition of charge and V is equal to I R. So I I gets cancelled, then capacitance is time over resistance so you have a time 132 second divided by r is 48 uh, sorry not 48 28 thousand so in 28 thousand you can figure out c capacitance as 4 7 1 0 into 10 to the power minus 6 farad and it's approximately 5000 microfarad part b explain whether the resistance of uh, the variable resistor is steadily increase or steadily decrease in order to maintain the constant current if you see the circuit clearly this circuit is a potential divider circuit because two component uh, attached in series with the power supply so initially if capacitor is uncharged this is 6 volt battery it is uncharged that means initially if we if, if it starts charging at t equal to 0 it's just you close the switch at that moment voltage across the capacitor will be zero so the whole voltage of six volt will be across the uh, variable resistor so six volt remember this is just at the start as soon as you turn on the switch but as the capacitor starts charging so the potential difference vc across the capacitor starts increases that means vr has to decrease remember the potential divider circuit the sum of vr plus vc cannot exceed 6 volt so vr plus vc is always 6 it cannot exceed 6 initially vc was 0 because capacitor was uncharged and vr is 6 but as capacitor charges vc increases that means vr has to decrease if vr is decreasing then according to v equal to I R at, 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 at for a given resistor so V is decreasing so the amount of current is decreasing I is proportional to V therefore the resistance has to decrease so that 
this decrease in current can be maintained for some constant value. So overall situation is because uh, Vc is increasing, Vr is decreasing due to current is decreasing. So in order to maintain constant current, this R, the variable resistance has to decrease. A textbook states in a circuit with constant resistance, the time to fully discharge a capacitor is equal to 5 times of RC. Show that RC uh, has the unit of second. RC, if you recall, RC is a time constant. It is time constant. That means it is a time. So unit of RC should be second. And how can we prove that? Uh, you can see that R is RC. So R is V by I and C is the capacitance which is charge per unit volt. So volt and volt cancel so you can see that rc is q by i now from that equation you can use the unit this is coulomb divided by this is current and current is coulomb second inverse so coulomb and coulomb cancel that means 1 upon second inverse that is second that's how you can prove that the rc has a unit second evaluate the statement from the textbook your answer should include a suitable calculation so the statement is saying that in a circuit with a constant resistance r the time fully discharge is five times of rc so if you see that uh, q is equal to q naught e to the power minus t by rc okay so remember this Q on the left hand side this Q is the charge that is left inside the capacitor after discharging in time T so let's say if T is equal to 5 times of RC that means Q is equal to Q naught e to the power minus 5 rc divided by rc and rc rc get cancelled so q is equal to q naught e to the power minus 5 and if you use your calculator e to the power minus 5 will give you value of 6.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 that means q is equal to 6.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 of q naught or if you convert this into percentage you multiply this number with the 100 for percentage so you say that q is equal to 0 0.67 percent of Q naught and 0.67 percent of Q naught is a very very small amount so 0.67 percent is very small amount very small amount and negligible or approximately equal to zero 
it's not that much charge left inside the inside the charge that means five times of rc can be considered as a time for a capacitor to fully discharge that's how you can prove Thank you very much. Uh, all the best for all of you guys and uh, see you next time.